What you are about to see is an episode of Comedy After Dark. This was a TV show that aired in Connecticut, 1992 to 1994, and starred high school friends. There was no high definition then. We shot the show on VHS tape. The old tapes broke down over time, leaving some episodes with poor video quality. Hello and welcome to show number 54. Right after our 50th episode, the next four shows are very difficult for us. We couldn't get the whole cast together. There was just a lot of things going on. John actually, I think he, if, I miss, if I remember correctly, he dropped like a boiling pot of hot water on his foot. And it was really bad. And if you get, and this happened to me years later, I had, um, I think it was second degree, degree burns from the knees down. It was so painful, I couldn't walk. I couldn't even stand up. So he had hot water boil his foot, and so he couldn't walk, and he just couldn't attend the show. Then Lawrence had gotten sick, and then there were some school events going on, and, and the local some of the band members who lived in town were part of the school band. So they had to go to the graduation ceremony. John and uh, John Landoffy and Jason Itzaldo also graduated, um, so it was just difficult to do episodes. And so one particular episode, it was just me and Lawrence. Another one, it was, I think, me, John, Lawrence, and Carl. And another one was me, Lawrence, Paul, and Nikki, I think. It was just cra it was crazy what happened. So by the time 54 came along, for the first time since our 50th episode, we all got together. And we were ready to go. Filmed the episode. It was a great episode. We felt like we were back to who we were and what we were doing. It was funny. It was wild. And then John took me aside. And I don't remember if this happened maybe a couple days later. He called me up. And he said, hey, Mike, um, I have bad news. Uh, I'm leaving the show. And he said that he is, I think he was going off to college. He graduated so he was going to get a job and he had things going on in his personal life that was just going to make it too difficult for him to come on Saturdays. And the biggest thing about it was that he may have a free Saturday, but what he was worried about was leaving us up in the air because he cared that much about the show and he didn't want to like have it where, okay, maybe today I come and then I, I, you know, I wrote the show. So how was I going to plan ahead for him? when he didn't know if he could come. So he didn't want to do that to us and to the show. So he thought it'd be best to just leave the show. <clears throat> and yeah, I was um, taken back by that and a little upset. I understood, I definitely wasn't mad at him um, and I definitely understood, but I was worried because I thought, wow, you know, he's such a big part of the show. I, it, it's gonna be such a void without him and it was. When he left, it was a void. I mean, it was the show changed. It was different. But we did it. You know, we pulled it off. We were, we were okay. But it just wasn't the same. But here's the thing about John. When we created the show, or who <laughs> was in study hall during a conversation we had, and John didn't believe me when I brought up this uh, idea to do a television show. He just didn't believe me. He didn't think it was possible. He didn't... I hadn't proven myself yet, so he wasn't going to take my word for it. So I put together a cast and a crew right away. I mean, I had this thing up and running and ready to go within a week. I had a, a, a show, a, a set in my basement. I told you all this stuff early on when you, uh, if you saw the first episode. So I'm not going to repeat the story. But the thing is, is I don't think John really believed in me, and not that he didn't think I was someone capable, I think he just didn't think I could pull it off. How, how could I pull off a television show? I didn't know what I was doing. I never did, did, it, did it before. And I think he was also nervous about it too because he never thought about doing television. And here, he, here I am asking him to be on it and be a part of it and be a co-producer. 
And because he helped me, I consider him a co-creator because we launched the idea during a conversation. So anyways, weeks would go by and nobody would show up. John wouldn't show up, none of the other people. Finally, at some point in March, we and we created the show in February. So at some point in March, James and Aaron, they show up. So we recorded an episode. Now, that was originally the first episode. I don't even know what date it was. But we only were able to save two skits because the rest of it, we were... The lighting looked bad. We, we, it was horrible. It was like fluorescent lighting, I think, and it just looked bad. And we realized it just wasn't going to work. So then weeks and weeks go by again. Nobody shows up. No John. Finally, on May 31st, 1992, James and Aaron show up again to film. Chris is there, my youngest brother, but no John. And that's when James says, you know what? I'll go get him. I'll just go pick him up. You call him up, tell him I'm coming. So I called John and he's home and I said, we're filming the first episode today. James is coming to get you. And he was like, oh, but um, I'm not sure. He, uh, he's already on his way. Um, okay. So he gets John. He, John comes in. He's a bit nervous. And I think, like I said, kind of standoffish. But when he walked in and he saw the studio, I think his eyes widened a little bit. And he was like, oh, this is a thing. Okay. And then when the show was over and he saw saw this whole thing in play, he saw what I was talking about, that I was serious about it. We did it. We pulled it off. We recorded the first episode. And something changed in him. It was like a light switch. And I think at that point he was like, oh, I totally believe in this. He became deeply passionate about that show. He loved it as much as I did. And he was so excited about it. He's like, all right, Mike. And he would do this. He would rub his hands together. And he'd be like, okay, when are we going to film next? Oh, when's the next episode? And I said, how about next Saturday? Yes, excellent. Oh, that's going to be awesome. So ne the next Saturday comes, which was June 6, uh, 1992. We film it. We had such a great time. I mean, it was really a lot of fun. James and Aaron didn't arrive, so it was just me, John, and my brother Chris. And then we finish, and he's like, hey, let's film the third episode tomorrow. And, he's, and I'm like, yeah, all right. And we filmed the third episode, and we had Jen, um, known as Jen Souls back then, now Jen Wentmore. She arrived and did our third episode and was part of one of the funniest skits we ever did, Bladder Control, which made me laugh so hard, I pissed myself. <laughs> I thought... How ironic. Um, but, I mean, I never laughed that hard at anything we did on the show. That, I, it was just, I don't know. I guess we didn't expect it and the way it all happened. So, anyways. John became our biggest cheerleader, our biggest support. And he pushed me. You know, he kept me going. I was very shy. At least I thought I was shy. As it turns out, as I now know, I um, have a social anxiety disorder. And so even though I looked like I was outgoing on television, and if you saw, saw our behind-the-scenes special, I um, was a leader, you know, I orchestrated everything. But when it wasn't, when I had nothing to do with the show, I was very quiet. But John was the opposite. He was the go-getter. He was the guy out there. He would rile up the cast and the crew to get us all going, and then... Um, he made it comfortable for me to come out five minutes before we would film and then joke around with everybody and, you know. So, anyways, he was he had become our biggest cheerleader and our biggest support and I think one of the biggest believers. And my I, to this day, believe he was my biggest fan. He, he really loved, loved what I did. I bring this up because... I'm dedicating this episode, show number 54, John's final episode, to John. You see, on November 14th, 2008, John tragically passed away. I never quite... Um, 
accept it as death. I never, I can't fathom it. And I didn't understand for a long time why I couldn't accept it, why I couldn't believe it. I think it's because, for me, the memories of the show are so clear so clear that I can put myself back there as if it just happened yesterday. They don't feel like they were over 20 years ago. I can feel the way the air felt and the smells that were going on and the way that day was and how I felt. And it was so alive. And John was so alive. He was there. And now he's not. When I was editing these episodes, I've been doing this for a few months now, and um, you'll notice my hair is shorter. So that's how long this has been since I've been doing this. Um, it's been a lot, this project has taken a lot longer than I thought. But when I was re when I was editing the first um, fifteen episodes, and I created a new theme because I can't use the old one due to copyright issues. And I created this new theme and I kept thinking in my head, oh, John's going to love this. This is so exciting. This is so fitting to what we were back then. Oh, he's going to love it. And I had to keep correcting myself and say, he's gone. He's gone. And I still struggle with that. I still struggle with that. I don't think this show would have ever made it as far as it did if it wasn't for John. I think we would have ended probably... Maybe after 15 episodes. Maybe. I mean, it was tough. We were having a hard time. We were struggling with the, the cable company. But John was the one who had such an enthusiastic, uh, enthusiastic attitude about the show that it rubbed off on all of us. And when things got, got down or difficult, he was there to push us, keep us going. He was there in school telling everybody that, that he knew and everybody that walked past him about the show. He told every teacher and he had such a rapport with people. And it worked. It worked. I never had a chance to thank John for all that he did. Everything he did for the show, that he did for me, how he helped me during my early days in my career and I owe him a lot for that, and I am beyond grateful. And I, I regret that I never had a chance to, to say that before he passed away. But I want to dedicate this episode to his memory. And if you have watched these episodes, I hope that you have recognized how much fun he was and how funny he was, and you can clearly see the dedication he had in the show. You could see it and how much he cared. He's the one, if you listen to the monologues, who's behind the camera getting everybody going. He's the one going, yeah, all right, Mike. He added this excitement. You know, he wanted my monologues to be good. He wanted me to feel motivated and to know that I was getting somewhere. He, never, he didn't want it to be silence. He really gave us a lot, and he he is the reason that show exists. So, ladies and gentlemen, I present John's final episode, show 54. I should say John's final episode as a regular. He did come back one more time for a guest appearance, but this is his final episode as a regular, and I dedicate it to his memory, and I hope you see in him what we all saw. Ladies and gentlemen, here it is. Fun in Northwood, Connecticut. It's Comedy After Dark, starring Mike Burke. Also starring John Landolfi. Carl Peterson, Jason Insaldo, Nikki Coulson, Paul 
Paul Neely. And featuring Jason Tucker and Jen Lassen. Plus me, your announcer, Lawrence, Lawrence Dagley. And now, turn up your sets, turn out your lights, and get cozy, because here he is. It's Mike Bird! Thank you. Oh, I'd like to welcome back the entire cast, because they all actually showed up today. Lawrence, of course, was here last week. John, good to have you back. You were injured. He was crippled. <laughs> and the rest of them, who cares about their sorry excuses? Well, it's uh, good for them to be back, I guess. It's not good for me, because I don't give a... Uh, we're on two channels right now, uh, channel 21 and channel 8. So, yeah, you know, keep watching us and, uh, you know... The bloop show won't be seen again. I'll make sure of that. Um, well, you know, something new with this upgraded system is the uh, Spice Channel. Yeah! 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 Now, 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 the people must watch it through, the people watch it through their screens, the, through the lines, and... Uh, Imagine the people who actually order this, though. Now, isn't that the most embarrassing thing? You, hear, you, you, you go to order this thing, and on your cable bill it says spice. Now, that's what the people who, you know, because hey, I've seen some of the people who work there, and the nice little old ladies. Hello, and welcome to um, Channel 8, Teach the Eye. These people got to see, and you see some guy, you'll know who, you'll know who the horny guys are, because you'll see spice on their, on their uh, cable bill. And they'll say horny, so you know who they are. And it'll be listed there, and you'll understand. Yes. Oh, uh, I have no monologue planned today because I've been writing the show all day. So, uh, why don't we go to a commercial and uh, we'll be uh, right back. Yeah. of wasting pure water? Well, no more with toilet water. That's right. You can enjoy refresh refreshing. <laughs> you can enjoy a refreshing beverage. We're keeping up with recycling by taking your toilet water and using it for a refreshing drink. Now, let's see what one of our customers thinks about it as he's about to drink toilet water. I like it. It's good. That's right. Toilet water. You could find it in your local markets anywhere. And not only that, you're tired of your dogs licking out of your toilet, drinking out of your toilet. No more, because this is also for dogs. That's right. Pour it in their bowl, and they can drink it. Toilet water for dogs and people.
Hello and welcome to Comedy After Dark. Uh, everyone's back today, so let's give a big hand for that. Yeah. Yes. Okay, shut up! Just shut up! Okay, uh, we have a good show today. We're bringing back our old style. We've uh, changed many styles, but we're bringing yeah. it back. Yes! And I gotta say, I'm pretty happy to see everyone together again because we haven't been together since March. That's right, and that was a half hour show, so um, so this is uh, an hour, we're back to an hour, and everyone's here. By the way, Lawrence, I want to thank you uh, last week because it was just you and me here, and you did a good job helping me out, and it was very, it was very tough. Okay. Lawrence! They play Death Lenny Rule! George! Shut up! Now that's enough! Okay. Um, well, I'm going to bring out uh, Lawrence in just a moment, but I want to talk about something. Recently, uh, school uh, ended for most of us, because you're watching this show in August now, so. <laughs> you're watching this show in uh, August now, and you see what happened is, well, what is this? You hear that? Fucking circus up there! Okay. Recently, school ended, and well, I must say that I am so happy. I am so glad it's over for the summer, because let me tell you something about school. It is nothing but hell. You go there, you sit in an uncomfortable chair, and of course, there are a lot of people who weigh 800 pounds, but there's a problem. And no offense to him, because he jokes about it. He gets stuck in his desk seat. And what happens is he bends the seats in half. Now, what I'm saying to this, I'm not making fun of him. No, I'm saying to the school board, get new seats! We're sick and tired of sitting on those cheap lousy seats they get stuck in, there's writing all over them, there's big scriptions, and people sneeze on them, and there's disgusting scum laying on top of the desk. So you please clean that up. All right, um, and congratulations to uh, John and Jay, who both graduated. Yeah! Emancipation! <laughs> Declaration of Independence! I'm gonna have your ass for this! Ladies and gentlemen, here is Lawrence Degley. <laughs> okay, you have to sit like that because you're short and this yep. chair is sinks in. Right. Is it comfortable? Yes, it is. Are you sure? I'm positive. Do you have anything you want to talk about? School ending? Uh... No, I'm glad. I'm, I'm Good luck to you too and in your future endeavors. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. You see, I made sure they didn't say anything. That's order. <clears throat> okay, we have our regular thing, good and bad list, but ladies and gentlemen, this is the final list because we're going to bring new features on in the weekend. Quite frankly, I'm sick of this. Uh, so this is about the new phone TV. Have you seen this thing? It's the brand new phone TV, and uh, what it is is you can see the people as you talk to them. So you could see old grandma, you know, and yeah, she could be a thousand miles away, but you could see her right there in your own living room. And you see, here's a good thing too. You don't have to worry about those pain in the ass mother-in-laws anymore. Because you could talk to them while they're 8,000 miles away and you're still at home. So they still pay you a visit, but they're not really there. And then you don't have to worry about bagging her after you kill her. Okay, so uh, here it is. Good and bad things about the phone TV. And uh, try to look at the camera this time. You don't do that. A good thing. Instead of caller ID, you see the caller. Bad thing. It's Richard Simmons and you be... Try to look at the camera and not the sheet. You don't usually do that. It's Richard Sims and you scream. <laughs> call, I it's screwed the, up on the it TV. It's caller on the TV. Remember that. All right. A good thing. Instead of caller ID, you can see the caller on the TV. Bad thing. You see Richard Simmons and you begin to scream. Ah! You don't feel so lonely when you call from a payphone. You see your wife screwing your brother in your home. Hi! 1-900 numbers are steamy as hell. It's because oh. you threw up? Shut up. <laughs> one, one, one nine hundred numbers are steamy as hell. It's because you threw up at the sight of a transvestite on the other end. You can see your friends thousands of miles away. You'll be there too when your friend screws your wife. When you call the police, they see a robbery in progress. 
bad thing when Mrs. Fletcher, when Mrs. Fletcher calls. Good thing. <laughs> All right, a good thing when you call the police, they see a robbery in progress. A bad thing when Mrs. Fletcher calls, you can't see her ass facing the camera lens. <laughs> A good thing, you'll be able to see uh, long-distant relatives without leaving your home. Oh, I'm reading the bad things now? All right, a bad thing. You'll see your old wrinkly aunt getting out of the shower to answer the phone. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, a good thing. Final, finally, and, and finally. I almost lost it at that. A psychiatrist can talk to his patients without needing an office. A bad thing, because he makes his patients feel worse and charges them $800 for something they already know they can't, they commit. <laughs> because he makes his patients feel worse and charges them $800 for something they already know, they commit suicide on the phone. Good job. Okay. It's, yeah. uh, yes. Yeah, <laughs> Nah. Never mind. This is the way I like it. Okay, when I put the dresses on, I enjoy it. Yes. Well, here's something new. I want you to write to us. <laughs> no, actually, we've been getting... Excuse me, that's my pacemaker. Oh, excuse me. Okay. <sighs> <laughs> Excuse me. I think actually, I think what happened was uh, Yogi was uh, fried. He went. <laughs> hey, I want to talk about that. <coughs> I can do whatever I want in here and fire people too. Get out, Mr. Insalva. You're fired. Your mouth is pissing me. So long, I tell you though. I'm fine. How are you? Um. Oh no, please don't remind me of that. I, I remember that once back yeah. in the old days. The camera would go up and every week. Man, it got annoying after a while. Why am I red? Why am I blue? I think that color should be... Ah, why am I blind? That's good. Keep it that because it's... Uh, who's, whose ass was it reflecting off of? All right, would you stop mooning me, John? Jesus! You know, you're white as a ghost. The, the light shines on your ass. It blinds me. I cannot see. I was in Playgirl, by the way. I was... Uh, okay, shut up. You're taking, uh, you're taking time out of my desk discussion here. You know what I mean? Yes, I know. <laughs> Um, I was in Playgirl, by the way, and I like to demonstrate my po pose. Can you hold this microphone, please? Certainly. Actually, it's more like this. <laughs> <laughs> that, was, that was my pose, and, uh, thank you. Ah! Yeah. Yeah. Wait, wait, wait. What? What did you just say? Get him, Mike. Get him. What? Get him, Mike. Get him, Mike. That's it. Get him. Go, Mike. Go. Get him, Mike. Get my knees on this desk. <laughs> Anybody got crutches? I think I just scraped myself to death. <laughs> I did. Shit, I'm bleeding. Oh, oh God. You know it's funny. I laughed. Didn't you see know, me laugh. you, you think, see me laugh. you think it's funny? You didn't see me laugh, huh? 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 Look, it was funny. I know. It was funny. I Come on, you didn't laugh. I laughed. You didn't laugh. I laughed. You didn't laugh. No, Come on, no. that's it. You didn't laugh. I laughed. You laughed. I laughed. Go ahead. Right. Make more day. All right. We gotta go now. Well, actually, let's. Uh, what the hell was that? <laughs> is that when you fart? Is that what sound comes out? Music? <laughs> I knew you were into music, but I didn't know you were into music. Okay, kill the joke now. Just kill it. Get him, Mike. No, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Loomis, I'll get you, Loomis. Get that close up. That's why I'm gonna shove this microphone up your ass. <laughs> and then I'm gonna pull it through your mouth. Um. <laughs> I won't allow any farther than the shoulders. If I see it going farther than the shoulders, like on my face, then uh, that will be it.
This show sucks, by the way. Just wanted to let you all know that. We got uh, coming up next. Uh, we've got um, um, commercial. We got chairs. Let's get uh, another commercial. We got news. Uh, former President Bush, Prince Charles, and Yarnish from Ghostbusters 2. We got commercial. F another commercial. We got an interview with Margaret Ray. Cecilia Ray is making her big return. She hasn't been here in a year. Yeah. Uh, uh, another commercial, and then the big skit. I want you to make sure you continue watching the show because today we have probably the most disgusting skit ever in the history of Comedy After Dark. The story of the Pukathon. That's right. Yes, and that's all I'm going to tell you. I'll just tell you another thing. I've got a headache now. I'm sick. I mean, I really got a headache. I, I think I'm going to drink some detergent. We'll be back uh, after this commercial for Summer's Eve for Men. Be back after this. Carl, unplug the microphone. Everything you got, speaking of making all your worries, 
show a couple lies. Wouldn't you like to get away? Sometimes you wanna go where everybody knows your name. And they're always glad you came. <laughs> you wanna be where you can. People are all the same. You wanna go where everybody knows your name. Hey, how you all doing today, dear? Uh, how you doing, Cliff? Hey, Sam. How you doing, Cliff? Hey, how you doing, Woody? Hey, what's going on? Hey, Woody, how's it going? Hey, Sam. Woody. Oh, I yeah, see there you. There you go. Have a beer. Ah, thanks, dear. Uh, someone left their... Uh, you some pizza? You know, uh, I was uh, delivering uh, some mail today, and let me tell you a funny story about the 1930s. The first mail guy in the 1930s was by the name of Bob Jameson. Was he he really? brought 80, type, 80 pounds of mail all across the United States. It's true. It's a true fact there. And, uh, you know, I'm not kidding you. I talk about it, but it's true. It happened right here in Boston. Hey, Clint, you here to chase my dog today at all? Well, yeah. I had my ass chewed off. Uh, oh, you can see a big Pitbull. chunk. Ah. Big dog grabbed my ass with my good one. You know, the first dog to buy the mail man had rabies. Cool. Oh, I, I thought they fired you last because you were reading people's mail. Be quiet about that, Sam. Yeah, Sam, shut up. If you want any shots, just tell us. Pops, maybe? Well, I'm sort of celebrating. We got I, uh, nice cream sherry. I got a promotion today. And uh, what are you now? I sort the mail. Oh, oh, what a job, Sam. <laughs> what a job. We can run this get, bar here. You think I can get employment there? Well, Woody, I don't know. You're a congressman now. Sure, Woody. have a beer. Did I ask you to have one? Take one anyway, though. Where's Those are red beer guns. Nami, by the way. I haven't Dorm, he should be coming in any minute now. Right, yeah. I hear his ugly bitch wife, Vera. Vera She's giving yeah. him a hard time for coming here all oh, the time. Gee. You think we should go That's her ridiculous. Now? You know, the first wife to do that was uh, by the name of Byron. His wife was so big and ugly, her name was Vera, too. Oh, well, really? But nobody's uglier than his wife. I've seen her myself. Hey, hey Gunner. You think we should go kill her? You've done her. Oh, yeah, don't worry. He, he did Vera. He did Vera? Oh my. Scumbag, <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. I'll speak the devil. You there. No! 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 Give me that, buddy. Jeez, Give me your beer and keep him coming. Here you go. Thank you. Here. How you all doing? Have a shot, Cliff. Peach knot. Boy, you sure are slob, Cliff. Jesus, you're a lush. <laughs> god damn. Cliffy, you all over here. me, Cliffy. Let me show you what Let's you get him drunk and see what it's like. Yeah.
Rebecca was supposed to be here. She never shows up! This is her car. She's feeling my house. It's terrible! Oh my god. What do you want for me? Hey, yes, Sarah! This home is like going to Ollie. Good stuff! I, uh, I called her uh, Rebecca today, and uh, she was with uh, her yeah, driving co car. Oh! Hey, yeah. Hey, isn't that that millionaire? Damn, <laughs> pig! Shut up, Carla, you stupid bitch! Make me shut up! Hey, Clutch. Clippy's, Clippy's drunk again. Clippy, you enjoy your drink? Come on, Clippy. <laughs> oh, oh my god, you're gonna get alcohol lush. poisoning. He's a lush. There, Cliff. Oh! That's enough for you today, Cliff. Look at that. Oh my god. <laughs> That's a giant new way I quit yeah. drinking. Yeah. I'm an alcoholic. That's why, because I noticed that I was well, sitting Sam, in the bar. Well, Sam, you expect when it smells like puke. Drinking is a little drool. That's, That's pretty disgusting. 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 You're a clown. Vomiting in his mouth. You know, Clippy, you're lower than me. Where else and that's pretty low. Jesus Christ, well, I got a woman. Well, I'm at least, uh, oh. yeah, don't have a wife who screws everybody. Hey. Ah. Oh, my God. Oh. I've had enough hey, of this Clippy. Hey, hey, hey break okay. it up. Boy! Break it up or break his back. Get out! Hey, son of a, you know what? That's uh. it, Dom. Hey, son of a racist hey, pig. Hey, that's it. No, that's it, you bastard. Go there, dick. You bad enough, Clip. Hey, you just knocked my tie off. Files of news today. We're down to the dude interview. It's weekend news. Been back. Last week I was hurt. I wasn't here. Who, who filled in for me last week? Carl Peterson. Carl. No, Lawrence. Carl wasn't here. 
Lawrence and Mike, they filled him in the excellent job. They did an excellent job, I'm sure. But I'm back now. We have an interesting guest. I don't know too much about this subject. I'm not really a scholar on this, but I got some help in the background just in case I get stumped. Let's bring him out now. You've seen him in Ghostbusters, his story. Yornish. Yornish. Hello. How are you today? Nice to have you here. Hey, come on. Now, let's get right to the story. Let me ask you a question. I hear you're possessed. And well, I've been doing the research, and it, they say you're possessed by a spirit, and it's known as Nah, it's ego. He can ego. crush your head like a housefly. Very good. Uh, okay, I'll crush my head like a housefly. Die, I crush your head. See, I show up. Oh, that, that's nice. Okay. Now, wh why is he in here? Why is he in here? You tell me. Hey, you there, get the museum? No, not to history. Not to history. I work there. He's already faking. See what I... What is... What the cut... The cotton bun, you know. Vinegar, right the dirt away, and then okay. we go. All of a sudden, come, this shot, oh, no. <laughs> shoot me in the head. I go possessed now. Yeah, so he shot out of a painting, and he possessed your body. Yes, he did. Now I hear it's to get the baby. Oh, what, oh, what's the baby? The child. Yes, the child. The oh. child. Now, is that for sexual purposes for me or what is that? For? No, 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 no. He become. If we get the child, he will implant himself into the child's body. Like and implant ego. himself? Yes, he will. Like what? Like breast implant? Like yes, he will. That's exactly right. <laughs> he will come alive again. And he will rule the world. Rule the world, you stupid fool. I now, really now wh where do you come in in this? Is he just like using you? Yes, no, no, no. I get the wife. You, he gets oh. the child. And I get the wife. So do you oh, have to I impregnate see. the woman to be the father yeah, of the baby? Yeah, that's yeah, Vigo? And to go to food, the food, the food, the food, the food. The food, the food, the food. Okay. <laughs> It must be this country, do not the food, the food, the food. So now let me interpret this. You do the food, the food, the food, the food, the food <laughs> with a woman. She gets impregnated. Yeah, and really she good. pops this little bun out of there. <laughs> it's Vigo. No, no, I said... Bondage! SNL! No slides available here. Slides available in the gift shop. I must say, I have to say that. You like that? Wait, what? Like what? Never mind, I think you'll leave it. Okay. Fit. No, no. This is only... No bun comes out. Swedish meatball come out. Sweet, okay, so the Swedish meatball shoots out, hits the wall, it, bounce back. It, it's Vigo. It's Vigo, it's Vigo. It's and you're the dad. Fly. Yes, I am a dad. You're the dad. Yes, I am. So and I get the vibe. The beautiful vibe. And then, and when the baby comes out, you know, everybody nice and happy. They go to the baby, go, woo You see the baby? Okay. Now, I'd like to bring out a specialist on the subject of the paranormal possessions and all that. Pretty good! He's, he's studied... <laughs> calm down. He's studied exorcism and all this. Well, let's bring him out now. <laughs> okay, Dr. Fishburne. Come here. Okay, Dr. Fishburne, he seems to be spacing out right now. What's the problem here? What? Now, will it see his... He has a fast coffee and... Infestation of a special pill normal psyche into his mind. He could go by another location. Shut it, Vigo! He cracked your head like a fly! Oh, I go! Oh, you! Oh, you! See, boarding here! We've already had enough. Oh, you! Birdie, 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 I am Vigo, master of destruction, and I command you. Command me, my lord. Oh, command me, my lord. Now, what's going on here, Dr. Fisher? You must get a news anchor. A news anchor? A news anchor? Little Boba Vigo, I must sit down. You must bring him to me so that I may yeah. enter his body yeah, and be born again. Uh, uh, I am Vigo, master of destruction. Oh, that is Vigo. Can you stop this? Can you stop this, Dr. Fisher? Yes. No, no. I can fly. No, no, no. Not the Vigo. Vigo, press your head like a horse. Woman to be your wife. 
seeing that. Seeing. So you're so, not denying it. No, I won't deny it now. Now, why are you getting back together with her? You made it obvious in the last show that you hated her. Not. You said well, she was a nutcase. She was celibate. Well, I haven't been talking to her. I've just been seeing her. Oh, so you just look at her from afar, or you go up and just gawk? I don't look at her either. I see her in the dark. <laughs> I knew English people were nuts, but... You know, all, all serious. Now, you, uh, okay. you, you've been dating again, haven't you? Well, yes, yes, we have. Now, why? Why? Well, why? tell me. All right, I'm Talk to me, you I'll, silly I'll, little freak. <laughs> all right. Well, you know, after a while, I got tired of the Playboy lifestyle, you know, the sex hotline and all, and I... Now, last... Let me just interrupt you. Last time you were here, you made us sound like you were some big, horny son of a oh, bitch. I know, uh, well... But we have evidence now that you, you're you celibate. I don't like sex, you don't like to watch sex, you don't like to be horny. No, I'm not saying that. I'm you just are, saying... and we have, we have your ex-wife. Well, not ex yet, they're separated. See you later. So, we have your ex-wife, well, she's not your ex-wife yet, but you're separated. Princess Diana, she is going to break this silence that you are denying. Diana, come out here. Hello, Hello Prince Charles. How are you? Hello, Charles. How are Hello. you? Hello, Mr. Landorfin. Your doll. Would you like Thank to sit you. down? Sit down. Thank you. There you go. Now, tell me, he's been saying that he's a nymphomaniac <laughs> and all that, and he said you were prudish? Fat? You did not like whips what? and chains, and he loved it. You are a liar. I, I know, dear. Well... Uh, you know, I'm, I'm You sorry. shall be quiet right at this moment. All right. You shall be I'm, quiet. I'm sorry. Smack him around. Shut Give up. him a few slaps. Oh. 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 That's it. Look, I must mention one thing he's done in the past. Uh, I, I, don't, I couldn't believe that it happened. He, Kick his ass. Oh. 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 Oh my that was God. only two slaps, <laughs> you horny bastard. I thought a third one was coming, dear. You know what Prince Charles did? He, no, tell me. He took two nipple clips. Oh, my. Nipple yes. clips! Oh. Dear, I don't think the he television took... audience wants to hear I this. I don't care. I don't think they want to oh, hear this. You sit back. I want to hear this. You know what he did? He had those phone calls that that, that radio aired. Stop he, this, dear. He gave them those phone. He gave them the type of... That is not true. He recorded it himself. I'm not happy about that at all. But one of the things he did was he took nipple clips and he clipped them onto me. <gasps> nipple and clips! Then uh, they were on so tight they began to bleed. Oh, oh dear, you're telling the dolls the they don't I, want to hear this. At the this. time I just had a baby, a child, and it was leaking milk. Oh, and they were that... coming out and he was drinking the milk All right, uh, while uh, hanging from the chains of the nipples. Oh, okay. My... Oh, that, that's enough of that but story. I think, the I think that's enough. Know. No, I don't I think, think they the should. should know. But I that. don't agree with this at all. Let me tell you something, Mr. Okay, I've been screwing you for all these years and making love is, should be such a kind and generous It is option. wonderful with me, isn't it? It is not. Your ears get in the way. I have to <laughs> grab your ears because you're so small. If I grab your ears, it comes out more. Oh my. Look at this, just watch this. Look at this. Oh my. Oh my. <laughs> that is just terrible. It happens. It's, it's the way life goes. And with Prince Charles, it definitely goes that way. Now, now it's not true. The size of a man is the size of his ding dong. Oh. Not the truth. Yes. Well, let me tell you something. Lady Di wears a wig. I. No! Oh, oh my. no! She'll That's it. I'm telling mums. I'm telling Mumsy and you. You can do whatever you want. Queen I don't care what you've done. No wonder why I left I you. Hear, I hear that he made you have sex and he watched with other men. That is true. And he even made Queen Elizabeth watch. Oh my yes. God. She enjoyed it and you know she did. Well, look at this. He is wearing Mumsy's dress right now. This is not. This he is, is the royal Mumsy's outfit dress. of the English embassy. That does look like a dress. Stand up. It's so not a dress. Well, let's stand up so we can see this. It's not a dress. Look at this. This looks embassy. like a dress. I can see his weenie hanging out from it. <laughs> he looks dying. Hey, he looks a little... This. To me. <laughs> I can see his weenie hanging out from his palms. Oh, look at oh. this flat chest. You dare to talk about Well, weird. at least I'm not like that other princess. Princess, what's her name? Fergie. Fergie, who went on screen with her nipples hanging up. That is uh, awesome. was not me. Yeah. My sister, on a pose, or whatever you want to call it, what you Americans call it, she was spreading out like a graham cracker and cream. Like a spread eagle? <laughs> like, a, like a fig newton. Oh,
Goodbye, dear. I'll see you in your dressing room after the interview. See you there. I got those little cups on. Okay. Oh, my God. Wait for me. I'll be right there. Okay, now, Charles, what do you have to say about that? Was she telling the truth or was she a lie? Some of it was truth. Some of it was just a flat-out lie. She like never, there was no way to name Bob. I don't believe that. Do you like to watch? When well, she has, you know, yes, it's, it, it's exciting to me. It is exciting to Yes. You? And just the thought of her seeing another man without me watching... It's, it's Make, it angers you, doesn't it? It's, yes, I'm very upset. Well, you know, what can you do about that? You hope to work it out, or do you just want to well, stay single? And well, else? I'd like to stay single, but still see her on a on a part-time basis, yeah. along with other women. Well, I'm going to have you back here again in a few weeks, hopefully. All right. I'm going to talk to you some more. Okay. I'm going to see if we can work this out, because I want you to get you back there. Okay, thank, thank you very much. much. Thank you. Even though you are a nympho. Okay. Thank you. I'll see you next time. Good to have Mike TV, babe. Music videos, MTV Sports. I don't want to see Cindy Crawford. I don't want to see DJs. I want to see Mike. 24 hours a day, Mike TV. Dude, I don't think you hear me. You're not listening, babe. I don't think I'm listening to you. Am I getting through to you? Get on the door of your brain and no one's answering. Do you get me, homeboy? I'm coming to you. I'm saying Mike TV and I'm coming at you and you're not listening. I'm saying my TV and you're saying I'm a lazy housewife who sits all day eating bonbons watching all my children. I'm saying to you, open the door and let me in and you're saying, screw you, you filthy punk. I'm saying, give me a cigarette and you're saying, shove it up your rosy red ass. But I'm saying my TV and you're saying, no one's home. I'm coming at you. You're answering the door. You're letting me in. Oh. From the files of news today, it's weekend news. And now making his final appearance is John Landolphy. Welcome back to Weekend News. This is our final interview. Hold on, let me just do this before. Don't drink and drive! I'm not driving. I'm not, I'm just kidding. No. But anyway, right now we've got our last interview for the day. Many times he's been here. One of our favorites. Now, he wanted to come out here and talk about something. Humping, something like that. I, I don't know. He wanted to come back and say hi, talk to us a little while. So I figured, why not? We haven't had him here in a little while. So here he is, gyrating hips, <laughs> former President George Bush. Well, the Bush <laughs> man! Shake those hips! <laughs> oh my, yes! Watching that new channel, Spice, haven't you? Well, I, <laughs> well, I must admit, I was watching that channel, Spice. It was delicious. It was spicy. And uh, you watch it through the lines? Actually, no. I actually pay for it. And, oh my God! Uh, six bucks a night. It's pretty, pretty expensive. And I like to order it every night to watch those women and those guys. They, they do a lot of this. Oh wow! The Bushman. Now you do that good. Have you been doing that with Barbara lately? Well, yes. Uh, every night still? Every night. You know what happened was Barbara lost weight after I became president. See, she wasn't eating as much. Oh, it hangs out about three inches from my nuggets. Oh, my God. Oh, jeez. Oh, You're happens. in tough shape, then. Oh, it's, tr it's true. I, I have a small weenie, a very small weenie. If I wanted to have a big weenie, I'd make one. Oh, I boy. need nipple clips. <laughs> yeah, you like bondage. Well, I used to do it when I was younger. That's for now. I was in the Air Force. I, I did a lot of that stuff. It was one of the, you experiment when you're in the war. You have nothing else to do. You don't see anybody. You see a woman. You think? No, I thought you were into bondage because I looked when you got your glasses are broken. I figured maybe a whip hit you. <laughs> is that is that what really happened? Or? Oh my God! Is he gonna throw up again? Oh, oh John, I... Mike, Mike. You promised me that if I had George on the show again, he wasn't going to throw up. Well, I, I told him I was feeling fine when he booked this interview. And That's I, Mike Burkhardt, host. I feel, I feel fine right now. And By the way, I want to comment on your new set. That, uh, oh, this looks nice, doesn't it? It's uh, different. It's fake. It's fake. Well, you know, cheap. Looks real. Yeah, does it look real? Yes, it does. Luggings and all. Why is it that the buildings swirl up like snakes? I noticed over there, too. There. They're not straight. They look like someone had a big windstorm. See, it's, it's art. It's, the, you know, Leaning Tower of Pisa? Ah, uh, yes. 
You know, I was on that once. And it used to be straight until well, Barbara went in. And, that's oh, happened. Yeah. That happened. Barbara went in there. She went to the top and <clears throat> told her, stay in the middle, Barbara. Stay in the middle. So she didn't. She went over to the edge and that's exactly what happened. It's horrendous. Oh, yes. Well, you know, the last time I talked to you, John, and Comedy Hour staff was in Washington, D.C. Yes, how'd you like that trip? Well, I must great. say it was a great trip. It was a good returning back there. You stayed in the same hotel, didn't you? As a matter of fact, I, I shared a room with Ronnie. Oh, yeah. He did, if, if you noticed, he didn't have Nancy with him. No, we and, noted uh, something really, really odd. He defecates the other meetings. That's true. Uh, <laughs> I heard him, I didn't quite see it, but I, well actually I saw your show on video, because it had been on television in the full content. But the one thing I noticed, was that I, I cannot see. Is yes. there a reason for that? You look Chinese now when you take your glasses off. Why don't you put those back on? Ah, so, I look Chinese now. Ah, bondage. Oh, SRM. Bondage. Yes. I am going to stop harnesses from your ass and Hang from them. Yes. And ride you like a horse with a saddle. Now, oh, now what do you think of Bill Clinton? What do you think of the job he's doing? Well, <coughs> Bill Clinton's been in office for now over a hundred days. Well, he's done less stuff than I did. Oh my, that is true. And believe me, I did nothing in my first one hundred days. I, I had a lot of speeches, a lot of slow, short speeches, a lot of beaches, went to beach, big beach, ugly. And uh, what happened was. Beach. The speech was well. It was it was beachy, and I'm a cool hip happening cat. Cat. Whatever. Whatever. Cat. Cat. I'm a sharp cat. And well, being a sharp cat, you gotta have be all ears. I should be yeah. sharp antennas. And what happened was Clinton is not doing the job I expected. He's doing an okay job. He's too busy duking Hillary. That's true. He, he, Hillary and uh, Bill are always funny. As in, you know, the other guy said, Fuka, Fuka, Fuka. Oh, yes. He's doing that all the time. I know. In the Oval Office, on the Oval Office desk, Fuka, Fuka, Fuka. And he's worried yeah. about Chelsea surgery, plastic surgery. That's true. Chelsea, as a matter of fact, uh, she, she's looking a little better. She's got the upper face done. Her eyes are gorgeous. They're violet. And her hair is a luptuous, luptuous. Shit, man. <laughs> <laughs> Did she shave the beard? <laughs> it's uh, it is shit brown. Yes. Very but shitty. Did she shave the beard? Well, she shaved that fucking beard. That fucking beard was so goddamn ugly. I thought I was gonna shit. Her hair is like a dirty shit brown, and it is very dark, very gloomy. But now it's got golden locks. Yeah, she has like a reddish, reddish Over. hair. It's nice. It's, it's so sexy. I, I'm getting a... Oh. <laughs> don't get erected. Not Let's not talk about it. We don't want to... No, come on. Come oh, on. Uh, calm down. Think of Barbara. Think of Barbara. Oh. Think of Barbara. It's gone. It's gone. Barbara and a Teddy Lace. Oh. <laughs> so now what's next for you? Oh, oh my God. He What, that. <laughs> what, what about that? Here's a good thought for you, President Bush. Here's a good thought for you, President Bush. Yes. Your wife, Barbara Bush, in a red teddy. Oh, God. Barbara in a red oh, teddy. God. Oh, That's oh. just terrible. Oh. Oh, God. Oh. <laughs> oh. oh. <laughs> Mike, I told you. This is the last time we're booking Bush.
Come on, baby. Come on, big boy. Come on. Hey, puppy. Meow. 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 Hey, come on. Bang me, all right? Bada bing, bada boom. I'm oh, walking with you. Come here. Oh, let go of my He's way. so cute. Come here, baby. Oh, oh baby. $50 oh. per hour, $20 per hour. Oh, oh, baby. Oh, let me squeeze it. Oh. Thank you for watching Comedy After Dark. We'll see you next week. A brand new show and some new cast members. Good night. <laughs>